Someone asked me whether it's possible to make the building of an authentic business to be easy and fun. Is it possible? It's along the way. Just so well, I talked about ease in an earlier video. You could find that on wherever you find my videos. Um, let's talk about having it be fun, right? Because society defines fun as basically material enjoyment. So uh, earlier I had just ran down the block to, to the bakery uh, to get some treats and that was fun. Um, you know, I was relaxing uh, last night and was playing a video game. That's fun. Uh, or, you know, having uh, watching a, a fun show with my wife and that's fun. Or uh, seeing friends we haven't seen for a while. That's fun, right? Surfing social media for some of us is fun. And so when you take that word fun and you say, oh, this business building, can it be fun as well? There's this illusion, and I think some influencers peddle this illusion, that uh, you can just be just like in pleasure, like the whole time and you're building a business. And the depends on how you define fun and pleasure. Of course, it always depends on how you define things. If you are saying, if you are looking for that surface level sensory fun, it happens occasionally when you're building your business. So for example, I mean, if you look at my those of you who are watching the video version of this, you, you can see my background here as made by Midjourney. I, I made it in Midjourney. And that was fun to, to create. Uh, but of course, that's not going to be my business, creating these backgrounds all day long. Uh, <laughs> it's so easy to do these days that no one's going to want to pay me for it. I'm not that good of an artist. Um, and even the people who artists who do get paid, you, you ask them, hey, is it always fun that you're doing this? And it's like, depends on how you define fun, right? Or if I am uh, working with my client group and I'm on a you know, Q&A session, I love answering questions in my client group. And they ask me a, a question, challenging question, and makes me um, think about it. Maybe it's something that I actually really enjoy talking about. And I answer the question and I, I feel connected to my clients and I feel like I'm in service. And that's fun because it's, again, something that I enjoy talking about. And But what about all the other parts of business? When you say, okay, business should be fun, right? If it's done right, if especially, George, you talk about authentic business, it's supposed to be fun, isn't it? Because otherwise, it's not authentic to your soul and to your, um, you know, higher self, your higher consciousness, or whatnot. Then what happens is you start to make this incorrect connection between, okay, if I am struggling here to solve a problem or to create something that uh, has some risk, people might not love it, then it's not fun anymore. You know, solving a tech challenge in your business or trying to get clients. The act of marketing, I've already said in many of my videos that the act of marketing, I see it as an act of growth myself and of service to my audience. No matter if anyone buys, especially during that particular marketing effort. Because, so here's a, here's a, Here's a, here's a redefinition of fun. I'm going to redefine it for the rest of this video. The more attachment to outcome you have in a process, the less fun it's possible to have. So if I'm doing marketing and I'm like, by the end of this video, uh, I better get you know 10 sales of my courses or something like that, then it becomes a agenda-laden performance. It becomes an act of manipulation of one's audience because I'm like, okay, but I'm not gonna be happy unless I get 10 sales, right? Isn't that what goal setting is? 
you are postponing happiness. <laughs> is that right? Is that what goal setting is supposed to be? I have a different perspective of goal setting, right? So fun is like you have to, we, if we really want to reach our higher potential in this life, we have, must redefine fun. So I'm going to use business examples because that's why we're, most of you are watching this. If you're going to make some content, right? Write a blog post or make a video and you have this attachment that it's got to sell something, right? Or it's got to get likes and comments, then you're already putting yourself in a place of more likely to being anxious and fear of rejection and desire for approval. That's not fun, right? If we define fun, however, as a deeper level, and let me give you two words to play with, adventure and joy. Okay, so let's talk about adventure first. When I am making a video, I don't know, really don't know if people are going to like it or not. At this point, because I have a, a little bit of an audience, I expect that even the worst videos get like one or two likes maybe, and the best videos get more than that. I don't know which way it's going to go when I make a video. I think the topic might be good for people, but it's never you never know until you test it in the market, right? So what I do therefore is I approach it from a sense of adventure to say, all right, I'm going to play with this creation and it's going to be, uh, it could be, could really serve a lot of people or very few people could <laughs> care about it and doesn't make any sense and they move on and that's totally fine. But for me, it's an adventure. Uh, and, and, and an adventure is where you are uh, curious about what the result will be right? Because you don't know how it's, the adventure is going to unfold. And you're also practicing courage um, to say, all right, let's, let's, let's give it a try. And of course, making videos for me is always that. But doing much of my business is that writing is definitely requires courage. And, um, you know, selling something requires courage, because I have no idea if it, anyone's going to buy. Uh, even showing up for my clients requires courage, because I don't know what kinds of questions they're going to ask me. And I might not, you know, be able to to serve them well in that moment or something like that. So, so curiosity and courage and, and let me uh, explain adventure becomes too painful and risky. If you, you believe that you might actually die and, and suffer and be <laughs> forever in pain, if that's one possibility then it becomes uh, maybe not so much an adventure, but it's a, a, a stressful um, experience, right? An, an adventure, think of it more like a game where you're playing an adventure game and you're really curious what kinds of you know, sights and characters you're gonna come across, what kinds of dangers you might come across. But despite the dangers, you know that you can always play the game again. And so the same thing in business. Whenever I approach a project, I always right size my project so that they're not so big and risky that, my God, if this thing doesn't work, I am out of business. So like spending a lot of money on a project or spending a lot of time and energy uh, for any launch, you'll notice that when I launch things, I launch very lightly, which allows me, therefore to launch again and again, every single month. You notice I, I sell something every single month. How am I able to do it for 14 years now? And going, I'm still going strong and I hope to be here for another 28 years, <laughs> right? 28 years. So it's because every adventure that I take in my business is low, is relatively low risk. I can, I, if I fail in this adventure, I can play again. I can play again, no problem which is why I encourage um, frequency of action, but to work lightly, meaning we take a lot of action, but each action we take is from a sense of adventure and joy. So let me move on to joy then. 
joy, we might say, is a deeper and more sustainable level of fun that is more connected to spirit or soul, or if you just want to say secularly, contentment um, and a sense of pride and a sense of uh, taking light uh, as as a comedy, right? Taking taking life as a as a play, right? Like hmm, I, so, joy has a different sources for each of us. Um, some of you might say your joy is in God. Uh, some of you might say your joy is in your higher consciousness or in um, the security you have from the universe to always taking care of you. And um, so joy, I don't like it to say, well, I'm, I'm having a lot of joy in playing this game or in, uh, you know, if it's, especially if it's like a video game or something like that. No, that I call that fun, right? Fun is, is more shallow understanding. Joy is when you are in the adventure and you see and you frame the adventure that what it's about is not getting to the treasure at the end. Okay, that again, the more you do that, the more attachment you have and the less it's deeply joyful. But if the adventure can be framed as growth, as curiosity of play and as a heartfelt connection with life and with service, then that's where joy comes. Because you witness yourself trying different things, learning and growing from the experience. You witness your own character growing and your own skills developing. And you also sense into the heart connection with your audience and with your with with life itself. And so like when I'm making this video, right, I have this deep level of joy because I am connecting to the um, experimentation, the exploration of my mind and my heart and my body. I'm also connecting to the imagination of the, the viewer, you, uh, being served by this, being uplifted by this feeling deeper security after watching this. And that brings me a deep amount of joy. Now, it's not necessarily fun sometimes, uh, because it's certainly showing up and having to show up uh, on time. And that's, that's the other part of it, is if you think it's going to be fun, you're probably not going to follow a calendar. Following a calendar is no fun. And this is where a lot of you are making the mistake. Because again, you have you have been deceived by the illusion that somehow an authentic business, a real true livelihood is supposed to be fun, which means not following the calendar. No, 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 no. Growth requires following a calendar. True sustainable service requires following a calendar. Why? Because this life is limited. Have you noticed? You, your, your soul still is, con <laughs> you know, bear with me for just a, just a moment here. See if you want to play with this idea. Your soul is, has still the inkling of eternity and still has this belief that there is unlimited time and unlimited energy. And so therefore you can be lax and you could have a flexible day and you have a flexible week and flexible life. And therefore you get very little done compared to me and compared to other people who follow a calendar. And you say, well, George, no, no, this is your life is supposed to be enjoyed. And yet you are using the word enjoy wrongly. <laughs> okay, enjoy has two levels, has the shallow level of eating a donut or uh, relaxing and watching some television, that's enjoyment at one level, very shallow level. Enjoyment is also, ah, I don't feel like showing up for my business right now. So I'm just going to go do something else. And when I get inspired, then I'll show up and, oh, I'm inspired right now. Okay, I'm going to show up and do something. That's enjoyment at a shallow level. Enjoyment, <laughs> E-N-J-O-Y, enjoy, to bring joy to life, to activity, means to practice touching in at that deeper level, like I said, of framing 
the activities as an exercise, as a practice of growth and of service, of connection to other souls and to life itself. And the practice, well, just like any practice, if you've ever been, uh, those of you who have been a musician or an athlete, you have the blessing of knowing what practice means. You don't just go, I don't feel like practicing today. No, no, no. You show up to practice because you believe in your potential and you want to become better, right? Life is calling on us to practice. Life is, this life is limited. Your, your soul has um, still connected to eternity and you always have to deal with this illusion that there's all the, all the time in the world and all the energy in the world, but not in this life. While you're still on earth, you're here. You chose this to practice limitation, which means you got to limit contract contraction is not a bad word you got to contract your your time management to to be more precise to say i'm showing up for practice for for my video notice i started my video you know at at uh at, at the, the time that i planned right so it's like I, I i didn't feel like it i i told you i was just at the bakery just now and you know i, I got some baked goods and I, I gave some to my wife and she's, oh, you want some? I'm like, no, I got to go make my video right now, right? That, that wasn't fun. I would rather sit down and relax for the, it's Friday afternoon when I'm recording this right now. What am I doing working on my business? I, I moved to Mexico, you know, I'm supposed to be relaxing now. And I, I said, no, 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 no. I, I have a different perspective on it. You know, moving to Mexico, a more relaxed state empowers me to practice with more clarity. And to invest my energy and my service uh, more with more mastery. Now that parts of life are calmer, and th th therefore it supports me to practice why I'm here and why you are here. What you're you're not here to enjoy life at that shallow level. Maybe that's that's as a respite. That's as a rest. That's like a break between practices. Between practices, sure, we can have the donut or to, you know, to watch a show or to take naps, which I do. I take four naps a day. For those of you who know my joyful productivity methods, I take four naps a day. Those are enjoyable at the shallow level. But it's also, but I time my naps. I, pre I, I have a calendar for my naps. And so you might say it takes a deeper level of joy to say I am dedicated to my growth and to my ability to serve my audience and to serve life itself in this limited time that I have on this earth, right? So I'm going to invest that energy wisely and I'm going to use the, the material pleasures of this earth as breaks, as respite between my practice sessions, which are most of my, most of my day and even my evening. You're, even when you're relaxing in the evening, you're still hopefully connected to your spiritual practice of not indulging too much in this or that and going to bed on time, et cetera. That's not fun at the shadow level, going to bed on time so that you can be rested for the next day's adventures and practices. It's not fun on the shallow level, but deeply enjoyable because when you go to bed on time, you feel self-pride. You feel, you feel pride of accomplishment. To say, see, I, I have integrity. I followed my calendar. It's the most basic practice of integrity is to have design a well-designed calendar and to follow it, okay? Um, including sleeping, sleeping on time at night, you know, waking at a reasonable time, having well rested and taking naps throughout the day if you need to, but planning those and then showing up even when you don't feel like it. Like I said, I never, I've said this before and it bears repeating. I never feel like starting these videos. Never. It's never fun for me. What, what, of course, like, you know, whether it's Friday afternoon or Tuesday morning or whatever, I always feel like I can prepare a lot more. I always don't really feel as inspired as I could be, right? I always feel like delaying it, always. So it's not fun for me to start these things. But, but I started because of dedication, and that dedication brings me joy because I see my, I witness myself activating my dedication, and that brings me joy. And that joy of starting the video, and then I'm, I'm connect, I'm feeling connecting, I'm, I'm practicing the connection to you. And in my imagination, I can't see you right now. I'm doing a Facebook Live, but I can't see you. But I'm practicing my imagination of you, and your uh, openness to receiving something that might be of of use to you, 
and I'm I'm imagining that, and, and then I feel I feel proud that I did show up for this. And then several minutes into my live video, I'm having more fun at the shallow level because I I, I I'm finding more of the flow. But it's always creating flow rather than waiting for flow to happen. And that creating a flow, that dedication is joyful. And then once we practice and stay with the beginning anxiety of any work period and just reframe it as, okay, I'm practicing here. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Then five minutes, 15 minutes in, we are finding a more shallow level of fun uh, that sustains us further as well. Okay. So I hope this is helpful as a redefinition of fun or adventure and joy in our business. If you can really take this on and, and interpret it however you will, but at a deeper level of dedication and therefore finding that joy, however you, you want to call it, you're going to be around in your business and taking a lot more action than most people. And no, no, no wonder you're going to succeed. I hope this is helpful. Thank you for joining me.